As we're aware of by now, DE have just added another five new Incarnin Genesis weapons to the already existing 30 that we have by bringing the total to a whopping 35 to collect. And as always, you'll be fighting these within the weekly Steel Path circuit rotations, and these five new weapons will fall under the week two of the rotations. However, you can also go and get these weapons as a one-time purchase for 120 plat each by visiting Cavalero over at the Zaraman and check out his wares. This purchase will also include all of the materials that you need to straight up add the adapter to your weapon of choice. So it's a nice optional option. Now you don't need to buy these, but if you do have the spare plat and want to save some time, then do go ahead. Anyways, let's get to the point. This video will cover all five new incarnates, their evolutions, a little bit of gameplay, and of course a build that I worked up with them. We'll go alphabetically throughout the video and I'll add timestamps to help you find whatever you are searching for. Starting off with Anku. This is the new melee weapon added and you'll be wanting to reach a combo counter of six to then heavy attack and evolve your weapon granting an increase to range and slash damage on slide attacks. You also get a 100% increase to damage and a 20% increase to both sprint speeds and bullet jumps. Evolution 2. To make these options more simple to understand, if you know you are getting overshields and want a heavy attack build, then go for the right option. If not, then the left option gives the weapon a base increase of 20 damage and an overall increase of 40% attack speed, which just benefits us in so many ways. So that's the option that I took. Evolution 3. Combo counter pauses when the weapon is holstered. Now this doesn't work on pseudo exalted abilities, keep in mind. 20% increased movement speeds or a 60% heavy attack wind up speeds. Well, I personally think the middle or right options are the better two to go ahead and take, so it's your call. I went with the middle option to synergize with the evolution upgrades of mobility increases. And finally, evolution four. Now, all of these options are going to increase either your critical chance, status chance, or both critical and status chance. This is obviously going to depend on how you want to modify your build. However, for me, since scythe weapons can guarantee a slash proc, when heavy attacking, I decided to go for a critical chance increase in my build. And up on the screen is the Anku build that I'm going to use. Overall, it's focused on heavy attacking. So damage, critical mods, faction mods for double dip in those slash procs, a 165% elemental for more damage increase, if not take a 90%. And then I took utility in reach for extra range, amalgam for the wind up, although you could take that in the evolution stage if you wanted to. And finally, due to the evolution of this weapon, having a lot of focus on movement, I decided to pop in dispatch overdrive, in which will grant me more movement speed on heavy attack hitting. So the build comes together as such. Overall, feedback and opinion on Yanku is that I think the weapon is okay. I personally don't think the Incarnate Genesis adapter brought any big upgrade to the weapon itself, but either way, an increase is an increase, so it's better than it was regardless. Up next, we have the Boar Prime. Build up your Incarnate charges by landing headshots, and then when fully charged, evolve the weapon into a beam weapon that fires three short-range beams that will chain link onto enemies. Evolution 2. The right option is a niche selection due to requiring a Warframe to have over 450 armor, and not all Warframes are going to have that within their respective builds. So the first option seems better, and before you evolve your weapon, do at least make sure that you dump your entire magazine at least once to activate this refied bane perk to gain an extra 10 damage to your base damage. This seems to only wear off on death or possibly if you fall off the map and lose buffs potentially. Evolution 3. When reloading from an empty magazine, gain a 100% increase to reload speeds, increase the ammo capacity by 195, or increase the weapon's accuracy by 50. Now since the previous evolutions wants us to dump our magazine, we can also select the first option here to help synergize with that and now also gain a 100% increase to our reload speed. Plus, reload speed can generally help evolving animations quicker, so it's a good selection here. Evolution 4. Once again, these selections are going to be on however you prefer to modify your weapon and builds. Personally, I went with the critical chance here because the 20% is a big increase, but it's also complemented by a 50% increase to your critical damage. So that's the option I went with. As for my weapon, it's a typical hunt and munitions build to give it longevity to the weapon and breathing room to help it scale if I wish to stay on my steel path missions longer. However, honestly, there's quite a few different build paths that you can modify this weapon for, and it will still be quite strong. So please go ahead and take whatever suits you best, but this is just what I went with for now. My thoughts on the Boar Prime are not the best, but not the worst. Now you see, when I first shot this weapon, I thought it was amazing, and a contender for a position in potentially the top five total 
in card and genesis weapons however after a bit more testing there are two things that i noticed the ball also snaps to enemy bodies now this can be quite annoying to players who are after their headshot multiplier damage to help melt enemies faster but it's nicer to those players who need a little guidance when shooting now in comparison to the legs of the torrid in card and genesis you can freely aim wherever you please so getting that extra damage feels a lot nicer to those who are always up for the task of aiming at enemy heads and also in comparison to torrid the ball requires headshots whereas the torrid does not so the ball is still good but again in comparison to what is already available for us i would rank it behind the torrid in card and genesis and i'd advise to focus on the torrid instead if you are solely after an incarnate that has beam purposes moving on to the prisma angstrom by lending headshots you can convert this pocket rocket weapon into a target seeking projectile weapon that shoots fireballs and ricochets off of enemies evolution 2 both of these options are going to be niche one of them requires over shields but the other one wants a warframe with over 700 energy pool that being said i took the right option because it has 75 base damage in comparison to the 50 base damage so honestly it's whatever you want to go and select Evolution 3, there's a 30% increase to projectile speeds, a 50% increase to reload speeds, and an increase to your ammo capacity by 9. So honestly, the first and second options are great here, and it's really going to be preference to each and every player. So I went with the first option, because both the Incarnate and Non-Incarnate states benefit, as they're both projectiles, and at longer distances, this will help close the gap. Evolution 4, an increase to critical chance by 6%, but a critical damage increase by 20%. Increases to critical and status chances by 4 Or gain a 40% increase to your damage per shot per different status type affecting that enemy. Now, I'm sure there's some kind of math involved here to really min-max this between the first and third options. However, my mindset was that the third option for increased damage per status type can come from anything. Not just the weapon itself, but from companions or even other warframes. So there could be more scaling options available for you here hence why i went with that pick for my build i focused on debuffing with plenty of status a combination of viral with heat procs and faction mods for double dipping plenty of damage increased with the galvanized shot cascadia flare and even the evolution selection from before then rounded it off with steady hands as this weapon can kick quite a bit Honestly, I actually quite like the Prisma Angstrom with this additional upgrade. It's quite fun to go ahead and use. And even if you don't want to go and take this exact build that I've gone for, you can modify it for more of a critical explosive build in the non-incarnate state if you prefer to do so. But honestly, I like shredding them. It could do a lot of damage to armor-based units and it makes for a good weapon of choice out of all of these selections to select from. Up next, we got the Prisma Gorgon. And a quick mention that you can select between the Gorgon Wraith as well. But the difference between the two is that the Prisma has a higher critical chance and a bigger magazine, whereas the Wraith has a higher status chance. Build up your evolution by landing headshots. Then, when evolved, you will turn the Gorgon into an embedded launcher exploding out heat damage to its surrounding area. Evolution 2. As always, things are more niche as our selections, but the right option gives us extra damage on shield breaks, so it seemed a better choice and it's easily procced as well, to be honest, especially in endgame content. Evolution 3. Reloading whilst empty will grant us an increase to our magazine size by 15. Now this can stack up to three times. In a 50% increase to reload speeds or gain 50% less weapon recoil. All of these options are genuinely viable. Select whichever suits your build. However, for me, I took the recoil and it stacks really nicely with the recoil mod in my build, which promoted a weapon with literally no kickback and easy to control. Evolution 4 our tasty selection of critical critical and status or even status selections now all of these options aren't exactly massive in our outcome so as always select whatever complements the build that you had in mind now i personally went with the critical chance as for my build, it's a traditional Hunter Munitions build. Nothing over the top, but breathing room for the weapon if I want to stay longer in Steel Path missions. However, since it can become a launcher, keep in mind adding in Primed Firestorm can increase that explosive radius by about roughly another 2 meters or so. So it's a good mod to chuck in if you want to go and bang things out instead. And my thoughts on the Gorgon are good. I think it's a cool upgrade. I don't exactly think it's insane, but it gets the job done. 
the charged per shot with the launcher can be quite slow. So if you do need to go and speed that up, it scales off of fire rate. And that complements the build anyways because it's a heavy machine gun. So it's a good selection out of all of the choices to go and pick up. So that leaves us finally with the Cyanoid Gamma Core. Build up your transmutation with headshots and when evolved, the Gamma Core turns from a beam weapon into a projectile that pulls in enemies then explodes out with cold damage. A group and nuke type idea. Evolution 2. The first option is asking for Warframed channeled abilities, again a niche selection, however the second option will increase our base damage and whenever we spend 50 Warframe energy we will gain another 5 more damage which can stack up to 4 times and last for 10 seconds. This option just felt better overall to select. Evolution 3, magazine reloads per second whilst holstered. Increase to beam range by 8, this does not increase the explosive pull range or an increase to the magazine capacity by 40. All three of these are good options. It's entirely up to you as to which one you want to go and take, with the first one being a little bit more niche and maybe built around a particular build that you're going for. However, I like the utility of the beam range being increased, so I went with that for my choice. Evolution 4. And to complete the pattern of increases to criticals or statuses. Now, I went with the first option here because it doesn't feel that much all in between all of the options available. I can get an extra 20% critical damage, however, in the first selection. So I went with that to increase whatever damage whenever it procs. And finally, for my build, I went status heavy. Damage, multi shots, fire one heats, faction mods, and a flare arcane to ramp up that damage further. I did try a critical build route, but I felt it lacked the impactful damage against higher leveled enemies. So I preferred status to strip enemy armor and whittle enemies down with dots. As always, please take whatever suits you. Now, the Gamma Crow is quite fun to use, and personally, it's my favorite out of all of the selections available. I really like the pull mechanic, and at lower levels, it's a fun utility tool. It could also be considered as a primer type weapon if you wish to try it out but it does only have 15 incarnate charges so in comparison to the effortless of like epitaph for example it's not going to be as a best in slot primer it's just something silly to mess around with if you do want to either way i recommend grabbing this weapon so guys that's my summary of the five new incarnate weapons warframe has just added this week which one caught your attention the most and what kind of build are you guys using with it I will echo that I do not think any of these weapons will crack a top 5 list in terms of how powerful they are to be honest. They are good, but in comparison to the other available selections, there is some fierce competition out there. But anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and a reminder that if you did, please go and hit the like button, kind of subscribe if you are new and join us for future videos, and a cheeky share of the video will go and help gratefully. But as always, I'll catch you guys again very soon.